Hey guys, Jeremy with Four Sons Off-Road. So we get a lot of uh, comments and questions and actually a lot of phone calls from all over North America. Guys asking about just the simple maintenance procedures on their mini trucks. Now I know it's a little tough to find some of this information if you don't have the uh, translated owner's manuals or service manuals. Um, but yeah, we, we really want to try to debunk some of the secrets and mysteries of these mini trucks because they're not scary. They're very simple to own and operate and parts are really simple to find for them. So I'm just going to go over a couple of quick maintenance points. Now again, I'm just giving a uh, simple maintenance overview on these trucks. I'm in no way uh, trying to uh, you know, tell you exactly how to do the maintenance on these vehicles and, and what procedures to use. I just want to point out a couple of the really simple uh, specifications and items that might help you in maintaining your own mini truck. So first off, two of your main items, air filter and oil filter. Now, a lot of guys even have a hard time finding these, if you can imagine, simply because, again, if you go to your local Napa and say, I want a uh, air filter and oil filter for a Suzuki Carry, they're not gonna have a clue what you're talking about. So we run, uh, for air filters, we run uh, JS filters, which is a Japanese OEM replacement. Uh, fantastic quality and uh, relatively easy to find online, uh, and pricing's not too bad either. So for this, uh, for this truck, for most 1999 plus uh, Suzuki carries, you're looking at a, a JS A963J. And I will, uh, I'll make sure to add all these part numbers into the uh, comment section uh, so that you can uh, reference them for later. But yeah, this is a, uh, again, real simple, good OEM replacement filter. Oil filters, you can run a JS, Japanese oil filter. Um, we tend to just run with a Fram uh, Extra Guard. This is a PH 9, uh, 4967. Now the reason we run Fram is you literally can walk into pretty much any part store and they should have this filter on the shelf. Now the reason for this is uh, Arctic Cat actually ran this Suzuki engine in some of their snowmobiles and this is actually the filter, the OEM replacement for that uh, for that Arctic Cat listing. So there are actual listings for this filter. Plus this filter is actually a very common uh, general purpose engine filter. Uh, so we, uh, it's really easy to find, price cheap. So, uh, and, and again, Fram is a decent quality filter. Are there better, better quality filters out there? Possibly, but hey, if you're following a decent maintenance schedule and you actually wanna find something on the shelf, PH4967 Fram, now this fits literally uh, pretty much every Suzuki carry that we know of, uh, well for sure, the 660s. But again, uh, always check for yourself before you just go and try to screw something on. You never know, uh, you know, I'm sure there's some slight variations out there uh, in terms of, you know, from truck to truck. But from our experience, this filter and definitely the uh, this JS filter will fit uh, most of those Suzuki carry models. So for air filters, uh, they're just underneath the driver's seat, which is on the right side of the Japanese trucks, of course. So you just have these two little uh, latches here to pop. And then there's a uh, little release latch back here. And then you can basically just flip up your seat. So with I'm your just gonna seat lock uh, strapped up uh, in the safe position, you can uh, locate your air box, which is right here. Now a couple just... Uh, those little snaps on the side there. Air box comes up and filter comes out. Really simple. And again, uh, this is uh, this is the filter that came in the truck from Japan. So they're typically really well maintained. It's very rare that we actually get a really dirty filter uh, in a truck that we bring over. But uh, again, we always like to uh, make sure we check them and change them out because you really never know. It's, it's impossible to guarantee when it was last checked or serviced. So, but it's, that's as easy as it is. Just simply uh, pop the lid, slide the new filter in, and away you go. Just always make sure that uh, the filter has the uh, rubber gasket on it there so that you have a good seal. You're not going to be leaking any dust past the, uh, past the airbox lid. Now you can see uh, in the background there the uh, yellow uh, dipstick. That's your uh, oil dipstick for the engine oil. So really simple to uh, get in there and uh, check that. Now for oil type, these trucks will typically run a, and you might sometimes see, and this one doesn't have anything that, that I noticed, but a lot of times you'll actually see pasted right on the side of the door. Sometimes they'll stick stickers uh, on here or, you know, even service stickers. Like this one looks like it's got a service sticker here. Uh, sometimes you'll actually see the service sticker as to when the truck last had its oil change or uh, and what type of oil was used. 
We typically, for summertime use, are just going to run a 10W30, good quality automotive oil. Uh, and uh, in the winter time, you can run down to say like a 5W30. Again, just a good quality automotive oil. Synthetics aren't necessary, but if you like to run them, you can for sure. All right, so I apologize if it's a little tough to see, but we're just going to climb underneath the, uh, this is the left-hand side of the truck. And uh, basically just to show you the uh, location of the uh, oil filter, as well as the uh, uh, oil pan, the uh, drain plug right there. So basically your, your oil filter and uh, is accessible from the left side quite easily and your drain plug from the right side quite easily. Easy to get to and drain. Now again, this, uh, these re they recommend on this F6A engine, uh, the capacity is about 2.9 liters. Uh, so you'll usually find you'll put about two and a half to like say 2.9 liters per oil change, depending how much you can get out of there. And uh, that's uh, like say a 10.30 or a 5.30 in the winter time, it's pretty simple. Now right behind, of course, we have our transmission. Now this is a four wheel drive unit. So you'll see basically right up here, this uh, top bolt up here, and then this bottom one here, that's your, uh, your transmission, uh, that's your, your check basically in your drain, uh, and you can fill through those as well. Now again, uh, Suzuki recommends for the transmission a uh, 90 weight gear oil, uh, like GL4 spec uh, is what they recommend for that. Let's have a look at the differentials. So rear differentials, really easy to get to. You do have a uh, your check as well as a drain off the bottom, really simple uh, to uh, to get to, to to check and change or even just to you know to service. Uh, again, Suzuki recommends a 75W80 uh, differential oil GL5 spec uh, in these trucks. And now, just under the front of the truck, I apologize, it's a little tough to uh, see the front differential on these. This is a Suzuki Carry Turbo model, so they have all this shrouding underneath here. But uh, you can see right there, you've got your uh, front differential drain, and then just on the side is your check and fill hole. And just like the rear, uh, Suzuki recommends a 75W80 GL5 spec oil for your differentials. So now for checking your uh, coolant on these trucks, these uh, little Suzuki Carries, the newer style ones have, Kind of a little hood on the front that gives you access to uh, access to check a few extra items here. Uh, so you'll see basically right here you've got your rad cap uh, as well as your coolant overflow tank. Um, I'll just prop this hood up here. And uh, basically to drain your rad. There's a little uh, front shroud piece here which just comes off with a couple of screws and then there's a uh, uh, drain plug off the bottom of the radiator. That allows you to, uh, to drain that out. I highly recommend always checking, uh, even if you think the coolant is in good condition, always check the, uh, the rating on the coolant with a, uh, with a tester because uh, we've found a lot of these trucks coming out of Japan uh, are not running uh, uh, you know, the proper mixture of coolant on them. So you also notice Right up uh, front here, you've got some instructions. Of course, it's everything's in uh, in Japanese. Uh, but basically, what this is showing you is that when you are filling, uh, well, even draining the cooling system, there's a couple of air bleed uh, lines. Now, the first one is right up here. Uh, this is your heater core uh, bleed line. So this this uh, tube will help bleed the the uh, the heater core of air bubbles. Now, this literally, this tube literally just comes up and is attached just to a peg right here. Literally, just to plug and hold the tube. So you simply just uh, pull the uh, pull the clasp off there and, and pop it off, and uh, that'll help to uh, drain the heater core as well as uh, fill the heater core back up uh, with removing the air. Now, the second one is actually in the left side under the uh, left seat. Light on there so you can see so straight in the middle there uh, that bolt right off the side so you've got your uh, that's where your thermostat uh, and everything is coming in uh, that bolt right there is a air bleed bolt as well uh, so just so you know where that is it'll really help you to uh, bleed the uh, coolant system after you've after you've done a uh, coolant change so again guys not that difficult really nothing scary about uh, owning and maintaining a mini truck uh, you know just some pretty standard uh, standard items and procedures there um, and as always if you have anything more serious take it to your local automotive shop they uh, these are all automotive spec vehicles so they're gonna have a lot more information and uh, and know-how as to as to help you out but uh, again be sure to like this video subscribe to our channel and check out our website foursonsoffroad.com see you later